You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received a telephone call today from the Nepalese Premier KP Sharma Oli. The two sides discussed bilateral relations and ways of bolstering them. The Nepalese Prime Minister lauded the precautionary measures taken by Bahrain in combating the novel coronavirus COVID-19 according to the international standards of the World Health Organization. He praised the kingdom's distinguished health infrastructure and highly competent medical staff. He also expressed thanks to the Kingdom of Bahrain for the care given to the Nepal Police community, mainly through conducting COVID-19 medical tests and providing the needed treatments. For his part, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister underlined the deep-rooted relations of friendship and cooperation between both countries, lauding the strong bilateral ties based on mutual respect and understanding. He also commended the contribution of the Nepalese community to the kingdom's development, wishing Nepal and its people more growth and prosperity. The Ministry of Housing said that the number of calls received by the Government Services Contact Center reached 12,633 during February. The level of communication services evaluation was 94 percent, with an average response rate for calls of 19 seconds. The Ministry noted that citizens' inquiries focused on housing distributions that the Ministry carries out in implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to distribute 5,000 housing units and on the social housing program, Mezaya, in addition to other related to financing services provided. The Ministry added that its efforts are continuous to enhance the capabilities of the different channels of communication to pursue citizens' satisfactions. The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, issued a royal decree ordering the allocation of 19 billion riyals to compensate citizens working in facilities affected by repercussions of the pandemic. The royal decree exempts Saudis working in the affected private sector facilities based on Articles 8, 10, and 14 of the Unemployment Insurance Scheme. The employees are to be given a monthly compensation of 60% of the registered wage and social insurance for three months with a maximum of 9,000 Saudi riyals monthly. The finance minister and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the General Organization for Social Insurance, Mohammed Al Jaydan, said that the support mechanism will work as stipulated in the Senate scheme for facilities included in the Royal Decree. This covers 100% of Saudis working in facilities employing five or less and up to 70% in facilities that employ more than five. The number of people qualified to benefit from the compensation exceeds 1.2 million citizens. The Kuwaiti Ministry of Health announced the first death case of the novel coronavirus known as COVID-19, while 62 fresh cases were reported in the last 24 hours. The ministry spokesman, Abdullah Senad, said that the latest numbers brings the country's tally of confirmed virus cases up to 479. Earlier in the day, Kuwaiti Minister of Health, Sheikh Basil al-Sabah, announced that recovery of 11 people from the novel coronavirus COVID-19, raising the country's total recoveries to 93. United Arab Emirates officials confirmed they are extending the nationwide disinfection program, which was supposed to conclude today. In a statement, the country's health and interior ministries confirmed that the new facilities and establishments would be added to the disinfection plan in all the Emirates. The statement added that the program will be subject to periodic assessment as per recommendations approved by the World Health Organization and established international practices. The statement also noted that the decision came in light of the successful implementation of the program, which was launched on Thursday, the 26th of March. March with the use of the most advanced technologies. The program, which was extended for a second week last Saturday, takes place on a nightly basis from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m., during which people are urged to stay at home. The Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas announced that the state of emergency has been extended for 30 additional days as part of the exceptional measures that are being taken to confront the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak. Abbas added in a televised speech that the efforts in combating the outbreak depends on the awareness of the public and its commitment to carrying out the instructions that have been issued by the government. The President also called on the forces of the occupation to release Palestinian prisoners in light of the exceptional circumstances that the world is experiencing and added that they bear full responsibility for the safety of the prisoners. The Prime Minister of Sudan, Abdullah Hamdouk, launched an initiative to support the government's economic program and to help face the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak, which was met with much enthusiasm. The Premier's initiative has called on the people of Sudan to donate to a common fund to confront the economic challenges that surround the outbreak of the virus. He affirmed in a speech through which the initiative was launched that the country is facing difficult circumstances which require the active cooperation of all Sudanese people. Upon the launch of the initiative, many members of the Sudanese public expressed their enthusiasm for the initiative initiative through donations through bank transfers and other means as per the instructions of the initiative's managers which have been circulated through social media.
A new robot could make disinfecting hospitals safer and more effective by using UVC light to kill microorganisms. It is hoped the technology will help fight the coronavirus pandemic, as well as other illnesses spread by contact with infected surfaces. It's a cutting-edge piece of tech that could keep patients safer. The Psychoius Geel Hospital in Belgium is testing the UVD robot. It's use, it uses UVC light to effectively kill microorganisms such as viruses, bacteria and spores, and also the new coronavirus. And to show what it can do, stickers are placed around an empty hospital room, even in hard-to-reach spots like the bottom of a TV set. The UVD robot even warns people to leave the room before it starts the disinfection process. UVC light is the strongest type of ultraviolet light, and the idea of exploiting its germ-killing power is not new. What sets this robot apart from the other UVC types is its ability to drive itself and self-operate inside a room. The machine was developed by Blue Ocean, a Denmark-based robotics company that launched it to the market in 2018. Yes, this robot is really unique on the market. There's no other, as far as we know, concept that is similar where it brings uh, both the UVC light together with the robot that drives itself in a room. If we see a huge benefit as the robot can enter itself the room, so it's a high level of security because you can avoid that someone needs to enter the room to disinfect. So it will really protect the people after disinfection, but also avoid that people can be infected because they want to do their job and they want to do the disinfection manually. By giving the, the, the maximum possible hygiene in this hospital, uh, we want to make sure that our staff on the one hand, but our patient on the other hand, uh, is, is safe when they come to this hospital during the coronavirus uh, spread and pandemic, but also afterwards, because it doesn't just stop from one day at the other. It's just going to be less people coming, less patients coming to the hospital for the coronavirus, but at the same time, there are going to be other patients coming. So we have to make sure that after a room is being used, it is perfectly disinfected because we don't want to have a spread pass through in this hospital. It's about exploring a mysterious solar system that's trapped in an endless time loop. Outer Wilds by Los Angeles-based studio Mobius Digital Scoop top prize at the British Academy Games Award. It also won awards for game design and original property. The annual event was overshadowed by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. The awards are normally staged with a red carpet event at London's Queen Elizabeth Hall, but instead were streamed live from comedian host Dara O'Brien living room. All nominees were asked to record an acceptance speech in case they won in order to keep the winner secret. Veteran Japanese video game designer Hideo Kojima was awarded a fellowship, the highest honor the Academy could bestow. Other new categories introduced this year included animation. The performer category was split into lead and supporting performers as well. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the British Academy Games Awards 2020. My name is Dara O'Brien, and I've hosted these awards many times before, but usually from some plush concert hall in the middle of London, not tonight. Tonight, these awards in their entirety will take place in the room in my house with a big telly in which I play video games. Yep, that's where the entire thing is coming from because we live in strange times. <laughs> Thank you, Luigi, Clark, Alice, family, Boston, Humble, MSU, uh, our players and the BAFTAs. We never thought this many people would play a game about writing letters and now you've written over a million of them.